Hello, it's day two of the third international conference on dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever in Bangkok, where I'm joined in conversation by Timothy Endy. Timothy is the Chief of Infectious Diseases Division of the Department of Medicine at SUNY Upstate Medical University. Tim, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Can I start by um, asking you about the cohort studies you've done among children in northern Thailand? Well, thank you. This is a multi-institute collaborative effort with the Armed Forces Research Institute of Medical Sciences, the Thai Ministry of Health, University of Rhode Island, University of Massachusetts, and ourselves. And uh, this is uh, a series of studies that started almost 15 years ago where we followed a cohort of school children, volunteers in northern Thailand, and looked at the uh, incidence of severe and subclinical infection that occurred within the schools, their villages, over time, over a period of uh, almost 10 years now. And does that, what did the, study, the cohort studies show? Does it, did they show that dengue is getting worse in Thailand? Well, it, it showed that dengue is getting uh, definitely worse in Thailand. But more importantly, when you're looking at such a um, well-characterized population, it, it really provides a lot of information about the fine scale uh, transmission of dengue, you know, among schools and children over time and space. Um, I noticed too that the, the studies, you were looking at the different uh, serotypes of dengue right. that, are, that are transmitted in Thailand. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, all four serotypes have been circulating in dengue for, for over 30, 30 years now. Um, but we were the first really to look at the sort of the fine scale nature of the serotype transmission. And it really was quite amazing what we found, you know, all four ser serotypes circulated. But one school would be having a dengue 3 outbreak, and then a mile and a half away, another school would be having a dengue 2, another mile away, another school would be having a dengue 1 outbreak. So that the uh, serotypes were circulating, but they, they produced spatially restricted outbreaks that, that changed and differed um, as you go a mile or two miles away, several kilometers. And, and how do you deal with that if, if, if different serotypes are breaking out in, in different towns close by? What's the response? What would be the medical response? Well, the medical response would be, would be kind of the same in terms of vector control since it's the same vector transmits all four serotypes. But scientifically, it was important to know because it reemphasized the need for a vaccine if one's available, once it's developed, that contains all four serotypes for protection. And is it the situation, the dengue situation, are you studying it worldwide? Are you noticing similar patterns um, in, in other countries and other continents as, as Thailand? Yeah, we have, um, I'm personally working on another project in Ecuador, for example. And Ecuador is like Thailand was about 20 years ago, where there's sporadic introduction and large outbreaks. And each country is experiencing at different time points of the history of Thailand, so that some countries are now are very much like Thailand, where they're all four serotypes are circulating. They have large amounts of dengue transmission every year and very large outbreaks. And um, so the rest of the world is basically becoming as endemic as Southeast Asia. Um, Thailand has, ha has had a dengue problem for, for many, many years. Would you say that uh, Thailand is more equipped to deal with it these days than, say, 10 years ago, compared maybe to Ecuador? Well, Thailand has been the leaders in both the clinical management, developing clinical algorithms to treat severe infection, and um, also uh, in studying and lessons learned from dengue transmission and severity. Um, so because they're knowledge-based, Thailand certainly is well-equipped to be able to handle um, and treat disease severity. Also, the lessons learned is that just how difficult it is to institute you know, national programs that control the vector and be able to control the disease transmission. And those are other lessons that have, that has been learned from the Thailand experience, just how difficult that is. And just finally, what are the benefits of having big international conferences like the one we're at? Well, uh, so the, the benefits are big and small. Uh, the big benefits are that uh, there's public exchange of really new cutting edge technology information and uh, where you can attend lectures and hear the latest on, uh, which hasn't been published in journals yet about the information. Uh, the smaller benefits, which may actually be more important, is that at lunchtime, researchers talk, exchange ideas, unite their efforts, and develop collaborations, and so that's the other benefit. Great. Timothy, Andy, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for asking me.